All right, what's going on today? We'll have a look at how to build this cool image trail effect. We have basically an array of images, and each time the mouse goes a certain threshold distance, we're drawing the latest image and we're getting rid of the one at the end. So this is fun. I'm gonna show you how to build it in Webflow with P5.js. Hey there, Webbay. All right, so not too much going on in the navigator here. The main one I wanna draw your attention to is this div with a class name of full. Now full has a width of 100% and a min height of 100 dynamic viewport heights. So this is gonna be the parent for our canvas and you can see in the settings I've set the ID here to be canvas parent. So we'll have a look at how that is in the code. And then just here on the home settings screen, down in the head tag, I am loading in two scripts. This first one is the CDN for P5.js. And the second one is just the code running off of my local machine. When I post this as a clonable, I'll be sure to put the code down here in the before closing body tag. Okay, looking at the bare bones of the code, this is how most P5.js projects are going to look when you start. Now I've added this constant of image URLs. This is just the URL from the image that I've loaded into my Webflow project. And then we'll have our variables down here that I'll show you in a minute. Next, we have the preload function. This gets run before our two normal P5.js functions setup and draw. Now setup gets run once when the project loads and then draw gets run, I think 60 frames a second. It might be 30, but uh, whatever it is, it just gets called a bunch. And that's where we'll do the bulk of our logic. Okay, so let's think of some other constants that we might wanna use in this project. Now, our distance threshold might be something that we wanna change. In this, I'm defining it as 100 pixels, but if you want the images to be closer together in your trail, then you would make this lower. And if you want them to be further spaced apart, then you would make this higher. The other constant to define is our scale factor. Now, as I want, as I resize the viewport, I wanna make sure that these images scale. These aren't showing at their actual um, width and height, but we're gonna go ahead and scale that so that when we, for different screen sizes, it looks okay. And then some variables that we want to define down here. So we have images equal to an empty array. And then we have a queue. This is gonna do the bulk of our work here. This queue is an array that holds the history of mouse positions as well as the image index for that position. So it's gonna be kind of like a, like a state. And that state is gonna say, here's the position to draw the image at as well as the image number that you wanna draw. We'll also define an object called last mouse position and we're just gonna set the initial X and Y value to zero. And these this last mouse position object is gonna get stored inside of the queue. And next is the image index and we'll start with the first image being zero. So the first image within our images array. And now we actually need to load those images into our array. So within the preload function, I'm gonna define a for loop and I'm gonna loop from a value of zero to the length of our image URLs uh, array, so you could add more or less images in here and it would work with either, however many you want really. And then all we're gonna say is that images of index i equals to load image of image URLs of i. So load image is a p5.js function that essentially takes your URL and loads it into this image um, format that it understands. Now we're gonna go ahead and set up our canvas and we can do that using the create canvas method from p5.js. We'll use our window width and window height here to make sure that it takes up the whole screen. And then we'll set some other styles as well as the parent. Now the canvas parent is canvas parent. So this is gonna drop basically the canvas as a nested div or nested canvas element inside of that full div, the, the div with the class name full that I showed you in the beginning. And we'll also set the style to display block. We'll set the position to absolute, the inset to zero and the Z index to negative one. This makes sure that our canvas takes up the whole size of its parent, which in this case is that div with the class name of full and that it's behind everything so it's not clickable and we still see our text and that it's absolute so it doesn't make cause any reflow issues. And then last is mouse position. We're gonna set to initial mouse X and mouse Y position rather than zero, zero. And this mouse X and mouse Y can only be called within our setup and draw function here. So now let's go ahead and set up the draw function, which is gonna do the bulk of the work in this animation. So the very first thing we wanna do is clear the canvas each time the draw function gets called. Since we're gonna draw something new, we wanna make sure that we don't want have all of our stale elements still on the canvas. Next, we're gonna calculate the distance between the current mouse position and the last stored mouse position. Now, P5 comes with this handy dist function, which takes four arguments, an X and a Y, and an X2 and a Y2. And so in this case, we're using mouse X and mouse Y, and that's gonna be the current mouse X and mouse Y position. And then the last mouse position dot X and the last mouse position dot Y. And we'll store that in this variable D. And now here's kind of a pseudocode of what I wanna do if we've gone greater than our threshold. 
So if we're greater than our threshold, we want to add the current mouse position and current image index to the front of the queue. So that array that we define that's empty right now at the top, we're going to update the last mouse position object to be the current mouse position. And we're going to update the image index to be the next image if within our number of images that we have. So you can see I have a conditional if here, if the value of D is greater than dist threshold, which again, we defined at the top of the code, then we're going to use this unshift function, which we can see here inserts new elements at the start of an array and returns the length of a new array. Now we're not returning anything here. We don't care about the return value. At least we're not storing it into anything over here. So we're just going to call q.unshift and to unshift, we're going to pass a custom object here. And that custom object is an X and a Y of the current mouse X and the mouse Y, as well as the image index. And now we need to update those other things. So we'll update our last mouse position, X and Y value to the current mouse X and mouse Y. This helps when this, this gets called again in later draw cycles, um, we have a, an updated value for the last position that we're tracking. And then also the image index, we're gonna increment by one, but we also wanna mod it by images.length here. And images.length in this case is five, such that if this equals five, and then we mod by five, we're going back to zero. Uh, because as you know, array start at zero and count up to like their length minus one. Now, something we wanna watch out for is if the images that we're drawing gets longer than the amount of images we have. You could totally repeat the images, but in this demo, I just wanna show the images once. So in this case, we'll have five images on the screen at any given time. And what we're gonna do is set a conditional here to maintain our queue length equal to the number of images in our images array. And so we'll say if q.length is greater than images.length, then we'll just pop the last item off the queue. So we've basically forgotten about it. Now, lastly, we'll think about drawing these images on the screen. And the very first thing I wanna do is define a scale factor. And so I'm just gonna take width and width is basically the width of the canvas on here. And it's gonna be the whole screen in this case. And we'll divide that by the scale factor. And we'll store it in this variable called scale. And then we'll start drawing the images that are all saved in our queue. And our queue is all ready to go. We just need to go through it now and draw everything as we have it. So you'll notice here I have a for loop and the draw order is reversed such that the first image in the queue is drawn on top. This is important because as P5 is going to draw things, the very first thing that you call is gonna be drawn first. So if we start at the end of our queue and then we come to the front, that means that the most recent thing that we added, remember we used that unshift method, will be drawn on top. And that's just the design. I decided to use a queue data structure here. You could totally reverse it um, where you're popping up here rather than unshifting. But uh, I think this way works well because we're gonna have to unshift here anyways. And it's just a nice way to think about it that your most recent thing is at the front of the queue. Okay, so we see i equal to q.length minus one and then while it's greater than zero and then we subtract each increment. Now we're gonna get a variable called image and we're gonna call the Q of I dot index, remember that's be storing the image index that we want to show from our images array. And then we're getting it from that images array, like I just said, and storing that in this variable. Next, we're saying if image, so this is just a check um, if we screwed something up in our looping or our math uh, that we wouldn't run this function, but we should be good to go here. Now what we want to do, we have our image, we want to scale it based on the scale factor. So we'll take our image width and multiply it by the scale and then divide that by the image width. And we'll do the same thing with the height. So this is just resizing the image or specifying the size. And then we'll use this P5 image function to actually draw the image on screen. Now, the arguments that the image function will take are first the image. So we're giving it the image to draw here. Next are the X and Y coordinates. So we wanna draw it at the Q of I dot X. Remember we stored the mouse position within our Q. So we're getting the X value here, and then we're actually gonna translate it by image width divided by two. This is so that it shows up in the middle of the mouse cursor position. If we didn't have this minus image width divided by two or minus image height divided by two, then it would draw in the top left corner of the image. And then last, we're gonna pass image width and image height. And that's just our new image width and our new image height that we calculated up here. If we didn't pass these, then it would just draw it at the width and height of the, the raw image essentially. And the very last thing we want to do before we continue on is we'll define the window resize function, which is another reserved P5 function, and we'll call resi resize canvas with window width and window height. Now, if we save and come back to our project, we can see that we have this nice animating image trail. And if I come here and come out of full screen mode and start resizing, we'll see that our images are resizing 
and our canvas is resizing as well. Now, something to keep in mind with this project is that this isn't really gonna work very well in mobile since we don't have a mouse in mobile. So you'll probably wanna hide this uh, or some sort of media query or uh, have JavaScript to look for the, the size of your viewport and not essentially run this P5 stuff while you're on mobile and think of something else that you wanna show to your users on mobile. Anyways, that's the video. If you like this video, then YouTube's gonna recommend another video. I'm sure it's a P5 uh, animation that I have. I've done a number of these now. So be sure to watch that. And then as always, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.